Hello, I'm Bill Hurt, the current chairman of the Quad City Woodturners. Uh, today we're going to present our fourth video in the series of videos for the absolute beginner. Today we're going to talk about accessories for the lathe. We'll uh, start at the headstock and work our way, way down to the tailstock. Um, there's a variety of, of accessories. Your lathe's going to come with just a couple of things to get you started but there are many, many different accessories that you can purchase that will make your job easier and uh, also drain your bank account. So uh, as we mentioned in the earlier video, when you're choosing your lathe, it's very important to know the spindle size that you're gonna have here at, at the headstock. On a full size lathe such as this one, it's almost always gonna be an inch and a quarter by eight. On a uh, midi lay that's probably going to be a one inch by eight thread. So that's important to know. The hole down the middle here is probably going to be the same on both of those. It's going to be what we call an MT2 uh, taper, and that's the taper diameter that's going to be on your accessories. And that's going to match uh, both the headstock and the tailstock at the other end. So that's important to know. But the first accessory is probably going to come with your lathe, and that's going to be this live or uh, drive center rather, or drive spur. Um, that is placed in the headstock, and then as you tighten up from the uh, tailstock here and bring those things forward, the pressure that you create between those two things is what keeps the piece in place. And then as the motor turns, um, these teeth will bite in, and then and that's how you. Uh, uh, how, how you use that spur. Now, uh, we'll, you'll see some demonstrations of this in our other video where we talk about using the tools, uh, but that's, that's that piece in action. When you're using something like this spur drive um, in your headstock, uh, sometimes it's after you've had pressure on it, you can't just pull it out like I just did. You're gonna have to use a knockout bar and your lathe does come uh, with a knockout bar and that knockout bar is going to work both at your headstock knocking out a piece like that or when you have your center in the tailstock. So that's something that will come with your lathe and that's what that piece of equipment is for. Another uh, kind of less expensive way to hold your wood is to use uh, what we call a face plate and a faceplate uh, will come in a variety of sizes and again it's going to matter according to your spindle size. This is a one inch uh, faceplate here so it will not fit this spindle size. These other two, um, I think this is a one inch also and that's a homemade one obviously and then uh, something like this is a one and a quarter inch and then that'll thread on to your, your uh, headstock there and then you will, prior to putting it on there obviously, you will drive some screws through here into your wood to hold that block of wood. A face plate's a really pretty secure way to hold that wood. It's important to note when you're uh, using your screws here, you want to use steel wood screws. You don't want to use drywall screws or an all-purpose screw. You want to use that beefier, uh, usually that's kind of like a number 12 or 14 wood screw to put in there uh, for strength purposes. So once you have that on there, a, um, it's a pretty secure way to hold your wood. The one thing about this is though, once your screws are hanging out there, say, you know, whatever it is, an inch or so, on top of that, you're sacrificing wood. Um, that maybe you would have been turning with another method. So it's just something to keep in mind, but you can pick up probably a um, faceplate adapter like that for maybe uh, 15 or $20. If you're fortunate to have some talented people in your club like we do, um, one of our members made dozens of these, I think, and was selling them as a fundraiser for the club. So, uh, this little machine shop and you could probably make your own if you wanted to. That's another uh, way to hold your wood. The next thing that people would buy uh, would be a chuck of some type. 
So as you can see here, there's a variety of uh, chuck types out there. They, they really range in size, uh, this being maybe a lighter weight, uh, smaller chuck up to something like this. It has a lot of heft to it. The jaw sizes that you buy, um, they come in a variety of jaw sizes. You can have something that goes down small to hold a, a pin, or you can have something like this uh, coal jaw set up that will allow you to reverse mount a bowl. I think this one will handle something around uh, 10 or 10 and a half inches in diameter if you take it all the way out. So there's a variety of different things to look at with a chuck. Now, one recommendation that I would make with your chuck is to um, go to your local woodworking store if you have one near you that sells lathe accessories and you're probably gonna wanna just buy a chuck that is, has jaws easily available locally. Uh, where I live here in the Midwest, there's really not a good woodworking store within, uh, you gotta drive an hour and a half, two hours to get to one. And so I buy a lot of my stuff online. And when I do, some of the measurements are in uh, English and some of the measurements are in metric and it becomes quite confusing trying to decide which um, size you want. So if you have a local store, you can go and, and check those things out. The other important thing, as we've already talked about, is knowing your spindle size because some of these chucks, such as this Nova chuck that I have here, comes, come with a dedicated thread size. This is a one inch by eight thread, and that's, that's your option um, with this chuck. It'll work on a midi lathe, but as you can see here, it will not fit on a full size lathe. So then you end up having to use something like this, an adapter, that is one and a quarter on the back side, and then it, it uh, has a one inch thread on the front side. And so now this chuck will thread on there and you can use it that way. And, and that works and I use it all the time, it's, it's functional. The problem is the more adapters you use, the more chance you have for a little bit of a run out issue or, or something that doesn't fit quite as well. But you can still use it. Now, other chucks such as this one uh, this is also a Nova chuck, but it actually is threaded with, they call it like a universal thread. And that thread uh, will accept an adapter such as this. And that adapter right there, um, you can buy one like this one that works with one and a quarter inch, or you can also buy this to work with the one inch. And so then you'll have a chuck that you just take this adapter out depending on which size lathe you're working on. Uh, believe it or not, it's, it's not uncommon for people to have more than one lathe in their shop once they get involved in wood turning. So now that we've kind of talked about mounting those chucks, the other thing to really talk about is the jaws. And on a chuck like one of these here, the way that you change the jaws is you stop and you unthread all eight bolts here and move to a different set of jaws and then tighten those back down. And it's important to remember that whatever chuck you're using, you have to use the jaws for that brand of chuck. Um, there are a couple of them that they claim are interchangeable, but they won't warrant those if you, if you do interchange them from different manufacturers. So as you're woodworking, you wanna plan ahead and um, make sure that you're not changing jaws all the time or you're doing the functions that you need to do with one set of jaws. Otherwise you spend a lot of time taking out um, these screws and putting them back in and then they fall down in your wood chips on the floor and your, your family, here's your creative language. And uh, one solution to that problem of changing your jaws all the time is uh, this particular Chuck is made by Nova, it's the Infinity model. And as you can see, um, I just pushed in and reset the, the jaws. I think Easywood makes a similar model. Um, I'm not sure about the other manufacturers, but this has been a giant time saver for me. So the, uh, it's kind of a medium sized chuck. It's not a big heavy duty one, but it's not a small one like the uh, entry level Nova chuck and it served me pretty well. One drawback to that 
are these pieces right here. Um, any one of their jaws will work with this setup, but you have to buy this little adapter piece for it. And these little adapters for a set of them, I think are around $30. So it's kind of a, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a, a cost saving chuck. It's a time saving chuck. So just keep that in mind. I know Easy Wood Tools makes a similar setup and I'm not sure about the other manufacturers, but if you're buying your first chuck, maybe you wanna consider one of those uh, up front. Uh, this would be this would be a good example of uh, coal jaws in action. Uh, if you're going to reverse turn a bowl and need to work on the bottom of it down here, this would be a method to hold a bigger piece like that. Uh, these jaws come, uh, you know, hold something maybe in the 10 inch range, and then there's an extension or bigger pieces that you can get so you could hold something maybe out to 14 inches or something like that. So you can actually reverse a fairly large item and then hold it on the lathe that way. One of the issues you have to worry about when you're using something like this is the maximum speed is about 600 RPM. Uh, that's usually stamped right on the product. There's a alternative system to this I think called a Longworth chuck which works similarly. Uh, similarly it just tightens down differently but both of those expand um, have some pins or some kind of jaws that you can put on them to hold that bigger piece. There's about, uh, I think, three different types of, of pins or jaws that Nova sells to go with this, but then there's also aftermarket products, um, different shape pins, depending on what you're trying to hold in that device. It's a pretty handy thing to have if you're wanting to reverse mount or hold something that's pretty large. Okay, uh, when, you, when you purchase that chuck, it's gonna come with a, a wormwood screw or worm drive screw that is going to be specific to your chuck. This particular uh, screw that I have with me here does not go to this chuck. But uh, the reason it's specific to it is because this, the, this shoulder that's on the worm screw will actually be recessed back into the chuck and the chuck will grip it here so that it can't come out. And so you can thread your piece of wood onto that screw and then um, do your rough turning or whatever you want to do. That's something that you can do, you know, until you get a tenon and put on your, your wood or just the method that you're using to turn it. This is another way to hold that wood. So it's important to remember though that the screw does match the chuck. One other thing to consider when you're buying your chuck jaws, and it, it really is a matter of personal preference, but it does matter from one chuck to the other. Um, is whether the jaws that you have here accept a straight tenon, which would be like a cylinder, uh, just a perfect cylinder that this is gonna grip onto, or if it's a dovetail, like uh, most of ours in the shop here, I think, and this one are, are both dovetails. And those are angled in, so if you're familiar with a dovetail drawer, um, it just gives you a little different gripping surface, and um, that's an important consideration when you're looking at your chuck jaws. Okay, the next thing we'll talk about here is your tool rest. And your lathe is gonna come with a tool rest and it's probably gonna be something like one of these. And uh, this tool rest will work fine for you. Uh, it's what pretty much everybody starts off with. It mounts uh, in your banjo here and you can adjust it up and down depending on the work that you're doing. And uh, you're going to quickly find, though, that you're, depending on the application, you may want a longer or a shorter tool rest. You might want to go, you can get these as short as probably about three inches. Um, the other thing that you'll want to upgrade is you'll want to go from a cast iron type tool rest like this one to a, something with maybe a hardened steel rod on it. This particular um, Tool rest, like I said, it'll do fine, but what happens is you'll get little nicks from catches or from dragging your tool across it. You'll have little nicks that appear in it, and you're gonna have to redress this frequently with like a file or some uh, sandpaper to keep it smooth. Because believe it or not, that smallest little nick that you get in there as you're dragging your tool across 
it kind of will catch the tool and, and you'll, it'll transfer to your workpiece. So once you kind of graduate from that cast iron tool rest that came with your uh, lathe, you're probably going to want to go up to something like this one. There's a variety of manufacturers that make a, a tool rest that has a hardened steel rod on the top. This is uh, much less susceptible to those dents and dings. It's rounded over. Your tool's going to slide very smoothly across it. This particular uh, rest right here is made by Advanced Lathe Tools. And in full disclosure, uh, Advanced Lathe Tools is uh, owned and created by Steve Center, and he happens to be a member of our club here. And uh, we're lucky to have such a talented artist, and he also happens to make some very good tools. So uh, in addition to Steve's product, though, um, there are plenty of other people out there making a decent tool rest with that hardened rod. Uh, Robust Tools is one that comes to mind. I happen to have another one of theirs uh, that I'll show you here in a minute. This product right here is made by Robust. As I said, it still has this uh, hardened steel rod on the top. And the nice thing about this one is it's got a curve at the end. They call this, I think, their J-Rest. Um, and this one, for getting inside of a bowl, if you have it out there, it really um, gets you into those deeper bowls and it has that curvature for especially when you're scraping at the end doing your finishing cuts. A tool rest like this is going to uh, make your job easier if you're a bowl person. Now, keep in mind each one of these rests, I think you can you know, pay anywhere from probably uh, $50 or $60 up to over $100 just for the rest. So I like to give you the price on everything just because uh, it can be an expensive hobby. But uh, this I think is well worth your time. Okay, this, uh, this rest here would be another example of a bowl rest. Uh, you can kind of shape the outside of the bowl or the inside of the bowl with this as it moves around. This one is not, um, does not have that hardened rod on it, but uh, it's another thing that makes just doing the inside of a bowl easier. Something like this really is a specialty rest, so if you're doing a lot of bowls, it might be worth the investment, but if you're not, um, to have it just for that rare thing, uh, maybe it's not worth the investment. That's something you'll have to decide. Um, we have one more type of rest here that you'll see, I guess, fairly frequently. This is like uh, typically called an S rest. This has a, is for a smaller lathe that doesn't actually fit this lathe here, as you can see. Um, but this has a, a couple of different profiles and you can spin it around depending on what you're doing. Um, if you wanna do the outside of the bowl, maybe you're over here. If you're doing the inside, maybe you turn it around that way. But this is another example. This is a cast iron rest also. So it's something you'll have to clean up and, and address every once in a while. Okay, the last uh, type, of, type of tool rest that I'll show you here is a, this one again is made by Robust, but I think there are other uh, manufacturers out there that, that make something like this. This is a, a flat, uh, flat tool rest, and it's meant to lay your tool on top of it, and it's typically used with something uh, such as this Jimmy Clues tool here is a hollowing as a hollowing rig and so if your piece say is sticking out this far you can actually have a rest that goes inside and you can really hollow out the inside of that again something like that's probably going to cost you 60 80 bucks um, but if you're doing a lot of hollow forms or, or deeper type vessels it's probably worth the investment to do that When we use this term, uh, live center, uh, what we're referring to is the fact that there's a ball bearing system in here and this thing uh, spins independently. Um, so your drive comes from your, your headstock, but then this free wheels it on the backside. They do make something called a dead center, which does not have that ball bearing system in there. And if you put those things together, you're gonna have uh, nothing but problems because you need that piece to spin freely. Um, so also when we talk about those, uh, your drive spur, you want that in your, your headstock cause that's going to drive it. You don't want to put it in this end because it'll lock it in place and, uh, you'll have a disaster on your hands. So it's very important to get a free willing, uh, live center. And that's why it is called a live center is because it spins freely. Moving down to the tailstock here. 
Um, your lathe is probably going to come with um, a generic type of live center, probably a less expensive one um, that mounts in your tailstock, and again, that that'll match up with your headstock to hold the piece of wood as it's spinning. Uh, this particular uh, live center that I have here is a very versatile one. It's made by One Way. Um, I think that's probably, they were the ones that really popularized this. There are generic versions such as this one. Uh, the one that came with my Laguna lathe is almost identical to this. Um, if you, it, this is probably an upgrade on a MIDI lathe that might be something that comes with a full size lathe. This particular um, live center is versatile for a number of reasons. Um, it'll come with a, like this one anyway, comes with a variety of cones that you can put on it. So you can use like, a, I think this would be called like a 60 degree cone. You can remove it, there's a point that's inside um, there that you can use uh, flat against the wood. This particular um, point that's in there oop, comes out and then there's a cup that goes that's there. So if you're using like a small sphere or something like that, you can mount it. You can mount that piece that way. You can uh, come, this one anyway, comes with a larger cone so that if you have a bigger piece of, of wood um, that you want to hold, you can mount this that way. You can actually take this cone off. And again, if you're doing like a larger sphere, you can thread this on this way and then use it, the cup portion to hold what you're doing. So it's a very versatile uh, tool. It has uh, standard three quarter inch threads on the end. You can also buy accessories such as um, these these plastic pieces here that'll fit on and again if you're doing a larger vessel or something that you want to mount that with uh, that's a standard three-quarter inch thread so you can put about anything you want on there um, you can buy like these plastic accessories from advanced lathe tools I think some other people might make a similar thing um, but as you can see you can put many different pieces on there as you retract your uh, tailstock on most modern lathes, um, as you retract it, it will have what's called a self-ejecting feature. So as you pull it back, uh, what's your accessory with the MT2 taper, it kind of discharges it for you. As compared to an older lathe, you might have not have that feature and you've got to use your knockout bar all the time to pop that thing out of there and sometimes they can get wedged in there fairly uh fairly well they're kind of difficult to extract um, another accessory that you can buy um, would be something like this uh, this has got the mt2 taper on it and then as you can see this is the same size as our spindle so if you wanted to reverse mount your let's say you've got a bowl or something and you want to reverse mount it and you've got a vacuum chuck or you've got cold jaws or something you want to put it in um, to make sure that it's centered up exactly and it's going to run true you can buy an accessory like this that you can take your take the entire piece off mount it in the chuck put it this way um, put your new accessory on there and then marry those together and virtually have zero run out um, as you're doing that. So a little accessory like that's probably going to cost you $25, $30. You can buy one like this that uh, is one piece. Or you can buy something like this one here that uh, this is actually for a one inch so it won't match the spindle. But having that three quarter inch thread that we talked about on your tailstock, you can buy an adapter like this that will mount there. Take your chuck off, switch it around. So whether you get one that mounts on your live center or, or uh, goes into the tailstock itself, it's a handy little accessory to have. Uh, this is another thing that if you're uh, drilling uh, things on your lathe, is handy to have. This particular uh, model is a keyless Jacobs chuck. And 
it'll mount in your tailstock. You put your Forstner bit or drill bit, whatever you're, you're using in there, and you tighten it down, and um, you're good to go then to drill into that piece using your uh, headstock to turn your piece, and then your, your fixed drill bit here, which is kind of the opposite of a drill press, but it's a, a very effective, very handy thing to have. You can buy this accessory mounted on an MT2 taper, um, also keyed if you prefer to have a keyed uh, chuck that you can tighten down. I will say uh, this one works very well for me, but a couple of times I've had to put a strap wrench on it because it's uh, gotten so tight that I couldn't do it by hand. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, another uh, little handy thing to have is a center finder. Uh, you're gonna, you'll find you use something like this all the time. You could certainly take a block of wood um, like this, and if it was fairly square, you could just draw lines um, across it, and you would be able to. You'd be fairly close, and wouldn't lose a lot of wood doing it that way. But as you can see, this chunk of wood is irregular. This was cut at a sawmill. Uh, I happen to know this piece of wood's about 30 years old that a, I got out of a guy's garage, but uh, it's definitely not square. So using something like this center finder, you just work your way around it. Continuing to mark and then after you've hit all four sides, you have right here in the middle your center point. And so you'll do that on both sides and you'll mark your center point both ways. And then when you mount it up between centers, that's the way to sacrifice the least amount of wood is because you've uh, made your center, your center point. And as you can see, that one's almost right on in the middle. So that gets you really close to your center. That's a handy thing to have. And then we'll go ahead and mount this up in a minute and call that good. So another accessory that you might want for your lathe at some point is uh, what they call a, a center rest or a steady rest. Um, this particular one here was, uh, goes on a, a MIDI lathe that's designed for a 12 inch uh, lathe. I made this one at home in my shop. You can find those plans out on the internet to make those. Um, you know, I think all told here, hardware, wood, there's probably 40 or $50 involved in making something like this. And what it's designed to do is, this is obviously a square piece of wood, but once you have this piece of wood round, if you're working on something large and it's hanging out this far from the uh, headstock with without any tailstock support uh, it's going to want to flop all over the place so having something like this out here and uh, drawing those wheels up tight to it it keeps it uh, spinning true so that you can work on either side of that rest um, that's kind of a handy thing to have if you get into a larger lathe such as this one this is a 20 inch lathe and this particular rest that i have here um, as for our 16 inch lathes out in the shop, we don't have one for this big lathe out here. This one was made by, um, again, Advanced Lathe Tools and uh, not, it's a quality product and I don't want to make this sound like it's just a commercial for Advanced, advanced Lathe Tools because there are other people that make these also and that they make a quality product also. This one is very robust. It's uh, steel, it's super strong. Um, again, it's not designed for this because you want to buy one that is sized exactly for your lathe so that the center of it matches up the size of the lathe that you have. Uh, most manufacturers, including advanced lathe tools, will make uh, these in every size kind of from that uh, 12 inch lathe up to the 20 or 24 inch lathe. The other thing that's important about these is the size of your bedways because as you can see, this one doesn't fit but they'll have an adapter that goes in the bottom so that it's centered up right on your bedways and then it'll tighten down. And then um, the adjustment method is here. But again, having something like that um, to steady your work when you're working on a large vessel or a long piece of spindle work is super handy to have. 
Building your own, as I said, I think I probably had less than $50, including all of the wood and hardware that was involved in that. I got the wheels off of Amazon. Buying one like this, you're gonna spend um, maybe several hundred to about $500 buying something, um, a steel commercial product like this, but it is a handy thing to have in the shop. Okay, the, the last type of uh, accessory that I think I'll talk about today anyway would be a vacuum chuck. And you're going to find that there are different methods of using a vacuum chuck. You can certainly um, buy one that has a vacuum generator pump that you attach to the lathe. All of them are going to use some kind of head like this. This particular setup that I have here comes uh, with a, or you use it with a vacuum generator that attaches to your air compressor. One of the purposes of a vacuum chuck is to hold kind of that bigger, awkward piece of wood. So let's say you've turned your bowl here, but you still need to finish the bottom. Um, you can actually have that thing still mounted in your chuck, bring it up to this vacuum, you, you activate your vacuum system and it sucks that piece up against there. And you have to be careful with a vacuum chuck because some of them, the suction is so strong that if you have a real thin walled piece, you can actually collapse it. So that, that would be one example of using a vacuum chuck. The head, the, this is I think a six inch head, you can get an eight inch, you can, get, you can make your own. Um, there's a variety of different um, things that you can do with a vacuum chuck. So typically there's going to be a rod or, or a piece of hardware that comes through your headstock here and then your other apparatus will be back at the other end and you'll create that vacuum and then it'll draw that thing right up there and then you can work on it. So that maybe isn't for the absolute beginner. This, might should be in a different video series somewhere, but I just wanted to bring that up as another accessory that you could have for your lathe.